All right, so we are on our day four. Uh, this is all about the items and inventory. And in this session, uh, we are going to look into the different setups uh, or different item setups that we uh, have out of the box in NetSuite. Primarily, we have inventory items, non-inventory items, and service items. And then we will also look into uh, how to do inventory adjustments. Uh, this is especially where you need to you know, adjust your on-end quantities in the system with your physical quantities. So this is uh, you know, the transaction that we use. All right, so in NetSuite, uh, you can create new items going in list. Okay. Counting and items. So this is the navigation. And when I click on items, I will be able to see all the items that are currently created in my NetSuite account. Mm -hmm. a couple of seconds to load. All right, so these are all the different types of items that I uh, have on my NetSuite account. And, uh, you know, I can export this list into Excel. So if there is a, you know, requirement where you need to do some sort of analysis of all the items that you have, or if you want to review if there are any duplications, you can export this from here in Excel, all the items. Okay. And if you need to create a new item in okay. NetSuite, you can simply click on new item. This is the new item button. I'll click on that. And here you will notice different types of item that NetSuite offers. So here, this is the item type. And you will notice that there are multiple types of items. So one by one, I will be explaining you all the different types of items, uh, especially the, the important ones that you will, uh, you know, uh, experience uh, down the line. So assembly item. So let's say if your organization or if your client is a manufacturing business, where they uh, procure components and convert them and you know assemble them into a finished good, then you will use assembly item, all right? And uh, if your uh, client is just a wholesale distributor where they purchase goods from the vendor, store them in their location, and uh, you know uh, fulfill it to their customers, a typical wholesale distribution business, then they will be creating inventory items in NetSuite, all right? And uh, let's say if you are working with a service-based uh, industry where they sell services, or if it's a software-based industry, then you will be seeing, you know, service items being created in NetSuite and being utilized. So, so far, does it make sense that based on the client's type and client's business, we are going to choose the different item types in NetSuite to be created? So, uh, Shivraj, uh, is this is this making sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, fine. Like, uh, uh, what does it mean exactly the item? All right. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, have you been using items previously? Like, do you, do you have any any sort of concept of items uh, before I uh, explain uh, that? So, items uh, uh, we used, you know, in, uh, in current uh, scenarios. Uh, mm -hmm. So not uh, exactly into, you know, uh, for... Okay, all right, never mind. I mean, I, I'll just give you an overall idea. So let's say I am, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I sell TVs, all right? TVs and electronic equipment. So these equipments and everything that mm -hmm. I uh, purchase from my vendor, and then I sell it to my customers, right? I, I have a, a retail shop of electronics. I purchase goods from the distributors and then I sell it to my customers. Mm -hmm. So these items that I'm procuring and selling is, is basically an item record in NetSuite. And this is gonna be my inventory item. Reason being that I purchase it. So this is going to be on my purchase orders and my bills. Then I store it in my warehouse and in yeah, my retail it. store. So this is, yeah. this is the concept of items. Anything that you purchase, hold and sell. Is, is called an item record. Now, item is of different types. A uh, simple inventory item, an assembly item, service item, non-inventory item. Now, this, this will uh, depend upon the business to business and clients that you're working with. If you're Correct. working with a wholesale yes. distribution client, it's going to be an inventory item. But if you're working with a service uh, client, right? So let's say if you're working with a software house that uh, creates softwares, so that would be a non-inventory item because it's not physically there. Uh, it's not a tangible good that they are selling. So it's going to be a non-inventory item. So we don't sell any products of our own. 
but perhaps we sell our okay. services we, we give training services so in that case i would be creating service items in next week so so does that make sense mm -hmm. okay yes and understand all right so yeah i mean assembly item uh, you can also create discount items in the suite. So let's say, you know, if you want to apply a discount directly on the sales orders, you can create discount items. You can create inventory items, as I mentioned, that, you know, if you're in a business where you're doing wholesale distribution, you can do that. Non-inventory items. So as I mentioned, so for software houses that produces their own, that develops their own uh, softwares, perhaps a good example would be Microsoft. So they sell their licenses, right? So a license is not a physical good, but they, it's, a, it's an intangible product that they sell. So that is perhaps a non-inventory item where we are selling our services to you. So if we are using NetSuite, we would be creating service items for sale. So hope that okay. is the status clear. Now with that being said, I will yes. click on inventory item here and see how to create a new inventory item. Yes. Okay, so when I click on inventory item, it is going to open up the new item page for me. Okay, now this is the standard item page in NetSuite with all the different fields that you can capture on the item record. And again, you know, you don't really need to be overwhelmed with all the information here. Just need to focus on all the important fields and, uh, you know, the, the basic and the mandatory fields that you need to uh, have on the item record. So the first one mandatory field is item name and number. Now, this is this is the SKU number or it could be, you know, the item name, description, anything that you want to capture here. So perhaps if you go in a grocery market or, you know, in a, in a grocery store, you will see that there is a barcode as assigned to an item, right? Before the description, there is always a, a number, an SKU number. So this is what you can capture in the item name and number field over here. So let's say, you know, uh, there is this SKU number called ASK123456. So this is the item number in the system uh, that you will uh, create. And then you will have the UPC code. So again, this is uh, also a, a universal code that you can assign on this item record. And then we have the display name. So this is where you are going to give the display name for this item. So let's say I am trying to create an item for HP ProBook laptop. Now this is the description that I will give here in my display name and code. All right. And uh, here I can select my type, unit type. So this is the type in which I purchase, sell and uh, stock this item. So let's say if this is an item that I purchase in bottle. I will select bottle if i select if, if i purchase this in box i can select box over here but you know this is a laptop and a laptop is something that is purchased in units or perhaps eaches so i'm going to select eaches over here so you can select your unit of measure as well on the item record in which you purchase sell and stock this good so i purchase laptops in eaches which is the most appropriate unit of measure so i'm going to select each over here all right, and then moving forward here, we have the classification. So here, uh, again, if you are working with a one world account or with a, a group of companies, you can assign this item to the relevant subsidiary or the company that is going to deal with this item. So let's say, you know, let's say I have 10 companies, but this item is only sold and purchased uh, by uh, ANZ Australia. So I'm gonna select Australia over here, and this item can only be used uh, in NetSuite with this subsidiary. You cannot use this item with any other subsidiaries. And if you want to give the uh, item access to all of your subsidiaries, you can simply select on the parent mouse over here and select include children. So now this item would be applicable to all your subsidiaries in your NetSuite account. Okay. And then you also have department, class, and location. So this is again, you know, coming, uh, this concept is coming from the previous sessions. So segmentation. So you can assign a default department class and location that would auto populate on your transactions when you select this particular item. So again, this is non-mandatory. You can just skip them, keep it blank. Uh, the important one is the subsidiary over here. All right, and I, I'll just move forward here. There are some custom fields created on this account, so I'll just skip them out. You know, it's not necessary to, uh, you know, uh, deep dive into that. But here, the important one is the costing method. 
So here you will select your costing method for this item. So when you store this item in your stocks, what is the costing method that will be used to ca calculate the inventory valuation and the cost of goods sold? So you have four, five different uh, methods, average, group average, FIFO, LIFO, and standard. Uh, and based on your accounting, uh, sta accounting uh, policies and procedures, you can select the relevant costing methods. Average costing is one of the most, uh, you know, uh, used method. So I'm gonna select average over here. Here you can give your purchase description. So if there is any detailed purchase description that you wanna capture for this item, you can give it over here. If this, there is any stock description that you wanna give, you can give it over here. So, you know, you can capture all those informations on this side. Then there are, again, you know, a lot of fields that you can capture. This is just for uh, reporting purposes, like, you know, manufacturer details, MPN number, uh, manufacturing country. So if this is an imported item that you purchase, you can capture all the manufacturing details for this item on the item record as well. All right. And then there is the sales and pricing tab. Now, this is the most important part. Here you can give your sales description for this item. So if there is any uh, you know, unique sales description that you wanna populate on your invoices and sales orders for this particular item, you can give this sales description over here. If you keep it blank, automatically the description that you have set over here will be populated. All right. And the most important part here is the pricing. So this is where you can set your pricing. So you uh, notice that here you will see all the different currencies. So on my on this particular training account, we have a lot of currencies uh, created, like USD, AD, CAD, uh, Euro. Now for each currency, you can set your own pricing. So for let's say you know USD, I have a list price for this item of uh, 500. And notice that you can also create multiple price levels for this item as well. So there could be a base price or a list price, but perhaps you can create another price level for your retail customers and a separate price level for your wholesale customers. So if you're in a if you're in a retail business, you will see that when whenever there is a walk-in customer, there is a separate price for for them. But when you purchase in wholesale, you know, in a lot from them, they will offer you a different price, right? So this is where on the item record you can um, you can capture multiple pricing for this item. So here, you know, I already have a list price and then I have a 5% discount price. I have an online price. So if this item is sold online, I can offer a different price. So perhaps, you know, it should be 600. See, so you can set different pricing uh, for your same item. So that's the whole idea behind uh, setting up the sales and pricing. Now you could do this for all of your currency. So let's say if you are in uh, Middle East and if you sell in AEDs, so you can go in the AED currency and set your AED price level. Now USD price is going to be different from AED. Uh, that's that's obvious, right? So if you if you uh, are in a different country, you will uh, have your different pricing. So AED perhaps it could be 900. So you can set your AD pricing as well in this section. All right. So this is this is the sales and pricing tab where you can set up all your pricing for this particular item. And then when you create a sales order or an invoice transaction, you can select the relevant price level and automatically the right price will be uh, copied from there. So whenever on the sales transaction, if I select list price, 900 is the price that will auto populate. And if I select my online price, then uh, again, you know, it is 900 right now, but let's say if it's 950, so automatically 950 is the price that will come up on my sales transaction. So I don't have to manually punch in the, the prices at the time of the order entry. Based on the price level set on the item record, automatically this is going to be populated. Okay. And then we have the accounting tab over here. So you notice here you can set your different GL accounts. So the important ones are cost of goods sold, asset account and income account. So this is an inventory item, right? Like uh, this is something that I purchase. This is something that I store in my warehouse and then I fulfill it to my customer when I receive an order. So you have your cost of goods sold account, you have your asset account, inventory asset account, and you have your income account. So whenever this item is sold, this is the income account that will automatically, uh, you know, used be used on my sales transaction. This is the cost of goods sold account that will be used when I fulfill this item from my inventory. And this is the asset account that will be used when I purchase these goods and store in my inventory. Now, these are all accounting terminologies. 
Uh, but as you know that NetSuite is an ERP system. So any transaction, any movement of goods that you do within NetSuite also uh, has a GL impact. And this is where your GL accounts are drive uh, for this particular item. At this point, do you have any questions on the inventory item? Mm. So if we have discount uh, for this inventory item, do you have any option here uh, to apply the discount for the particular uh, item? No, discount is a separate item type and that is to be applied when you are doing your sales transaction. So, okay, you know, so not sales, trans, sales order, you will, yeah, it's it's not here. It, it is a separate item that you will create and apply on your sales order or invoice. Okay. Okay, so then it is fine. Okay, all right. So, yeah, these are some of the important things that you need to know when you are creating an item record. And once I have entered all the information, relevant information, information i can simply save this all right so these are some custom fields created i'll just enter a few things over here okay oh my god 